everybody. Welcome to the Technical Analysis Webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting this evening. Uh, as we get started, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Just waiting on a few more replies. Uh, if you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. All right, great. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, feel free to let me know. As always, keep in mind that no one trade is guaranteed to profit. Uh, with each trade you take, there is certainly risk involved. Uh, so you want to risk manage in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, and as we go through the, the web trader platform and, and, and the features that are available on it, you'll see there are some features built into that that really help uh, make risk management a lot easier. Uh, and keep in mind that as we go over some strategy concepts within the session that we're coming from an educational perspective, uh, not to be taken as financial advisement. For anyone who's brand new to things, uh, real quick, what is technical analysis? Well, basically it's looking back at the charts, uh, typically candlestick charts are the type that we're looking at, uh, and, and trying to find patterns, uh, movements uh, that maybe lend some predictability uh, from the past towards future movements. And uh, while it's not always 100% uh, successful, that's for sure, uh, certainly uh, traders have found a lot of benefit in analyzing the price patterns from the past and helping that project forward uh, entry points, exit points, et cetera, uh, for, for future trades. And we'll go through some of those ideas today. And it re it's really helpful if along the way you also keep in mind the fundamental news situation because uh, you know, technical analysis uh, is helpful, but it also is nice if you understand what the sentiment is for the day, uh, because then you can pick and choose which entry points make the most sense within your technical analysis based on which way you feel the wind is blowing uh, for the particular instrument that you're trading on. And we'll kind of go through some ideas in that regard as well. Uh, and we may use an indicator or two uh, that's another way to do technical analysis rather than just drawing your own lines, which is where we tend to lean uh, in my webinars with, with manual methods of technical analysis, drawing your own support and resistance levels, looking for ranging patterns, uh, looking for breakthroughs of important price levels, that sort of thing. Uh, it's really nice to do those sorts of technical analysis strategies manually because then you really get a feel for understanding uh, what it is the indicator is actually looking for when you start to use an indicator. Uh, so the learning process, I think, is, is better as we do things manually, but on occasion we'll throw an indicator on the chart as well. Uh, and if you have any questions as we go along, feel free to uh, pose those questions at any time in the chat box. Now, from our main website, I want to make sure you understand where to find our Avatrade Go mobile app, which allows you to trade on both MT4 and MT5 accounts. If you go under the trading platforms option, not only will you see uh, automated trading solutions, uh, also find our Arbitrade Go mobile app here. And what you see in the web trader platform that we're about to utilize for today's session, uh, all of those features and functionalities are available in the Arbitrade Go mobile app as well. So whether it's top of protect, uh, which allows you to protect trades for defined periods of time, uh, for, for small premium costs, or, or maybe it's the calculation feature within the order window that calculates your exposure and your potential profit for you before you ever place trades. All of these features and more are in the app, uh, just like in our web trade. So uh, I would recommend downloading the app, check it out. I think, I think you'll find it uh, very useful for those of you who, who trade kind of on the move. Now, uh, logging in from a our main website in the upper right corner here uh, gets you into our web trader then. Uh, and since it's a technical analysis webinar, obviously we're going to make use of, of the technical analysis tools within the platform as we do our technical analysis strategies. Uh, but we also can, can do our own technical analysis. We don't have to just use the signals and, and, and the, the price levels that, that are outlined for you. We can also maybe take some time to draw our own levels as well. Uh, but what we see here, if you point at the globe over here on the left-hand side, you, you have a number of advanced tools here. 
uh, a couple of which, market buzz and, and the economic calendar, uh, are fundamental news tools. So we, we won't focus a lot of time on those in today's session, but I did want to show you something in the economic calendar because before we do the technical analysis, remember I said I think it's important to understand the sentiment, what's going on uh, today. And, and really the sentiment really wasn't so negative today uh, through a, a large part of the day, uh, but uh, some announcements came out of the U.S. today. And if we click on today's date on the economic calendar, uh, we look back at some announcements that just came out of the U.S. and we see building permits uh, expected to have only gone up a little to 0.6%. They went flying up to 5.2% increase. The last numbers showed a decrease in building permits. You know, the U.S. has been raising interest rates like crazy uh, over the past year plus to try to bring down inflation, to try and actually lower demand for things in the US. Uh, and, and just this last rate decision was the first time in over a year that they did not raise the interest rate. They kept it the same, saying, hey, uh, we still might need to raise the interest rate, but this time we'll pause it uh, for the time being. And, and you know, there was fear on the markets just because they said we still might raise it more. Uh, this was bad news for those that don't want more rate hikes. Uh, the building permits showing huge, huge demand. Uh, housing starts as well. Look at this. It expected to be down 1.2%. The housing starts all of a sudden jumped 21.7%. Uh, what a huge increase in housing starts. So those that were hoping house prices would come down, uh, especially with the increased interest rates, making it harder to get loans. Uh, no, this demand, this type of demand for housing, the fear is now the U.S. is going to see more reason to raise interest rates again when the FOMC committee meets next. So uh, the fact that they already said they think they might raise rates a couple more times this year, uh, now numbers like this came out today. Uh, this is where the sell-off happened, uh, started today. This data came in. And, you know, in a normal world, uh, this type of data would be good news. It shows a healthy economy, right? Uh, numbers coming in better than expected, higher than expected for building permits, for housing starts. You think, wow, that's great news. That means people have money to spend. Uh, the problem is they're trying to bring down inflation. And, uh, and this type of data shows that maybe uh, they've got more work to do to lower demand enough in different sectors of the economy to bring down inflation. Uh, Brian, I'm reading your question right now. Ah, yes, for sure. We'll go over an example with Ava Protect. Good question. And yeah, we'll, we'll go through it. I'll make sure uh, all of you understand how it works. But this is where the, the negative sentiment hit today, was with these numbers out of the U.S. Globally, all of a sudden, uh, there's fear. And, and, you know, I don't know if you've heard the old phrase, but uh, economically, uh, there, there's, there's an old saying that, uh, you know, if the U.S. catches a cold, the, the whole world sneezes. Uh, and, and that, you know, the U.S. kind of caught a cold today, economically speaking, with that data coming out because of the fear about rate hikes. And, and it affects not just the U.S. indices and equities and commodities, but uh, globally there's an effect when this type of fear hits uh, in, in a general sense. So with that understanding, now we can start looking at signals, right? So uh, we can look at something like Australian USD and see uh, it's a sell signal. That's no surprise, right? You know, if there's all of a sudden increased fear that, oh my gosh, the US is gonna have to raise interest rates more to try and get rid of this inflation because of that strong housing data that came out, uh, then it makes sense that the U.S. dollar would strengthen and pull the Australian down. So fundamentally speaking, I already expected to see that that's probably the signal coming from Trading Central uh, because of the fundamental news we just looked at. So when you're going to use signals, if you use signals, you don't have to use them, but anything with this symbol uh, has a signal coming from Trading Central that's active. And uh, if you're going to use a signal, it would make sense to do what we just did. Take five minutes to get a look at what's the sentiment today and why. And, uh, you know, the economic calendar a lot of times is a nice place to start. You can also use market buzz. 
uh, which is another fundamental news feature we go over on Thursdays in my Thursday session to get an idea of the sentiment. And then you can jump in and do your technical analysis in the direction that makes sense based on the sentiment. So right now it makes sense to me with the fear about US rate hikes going way up again, uh, that the USD would strengthen against other currencies. Now I'd pull up a signal and indeed, I agree with the signal. And, and you don't have to agree, but I'm saying if you agree, based on your fundamental analysis, then it makes sense maybe to act on that signal. So simulating a signal that maybe you might agree with, then uh, if you did, then you'd start to look at entry point. And so this signal is saying, as long as the movement is below this pivot line, that's what the pivot, resistance slash pivot, this line right here, this is what it says, resistance slash pivot, this line means if it goes above that line, then the, then the sell signals dead okay they're saying if it, if the movement reverses and goes above this resistance line then something changed with the momentum and they're saying then then you might think about buying with your take profit up towards this resistance level here or this resistance level here and you see the suggested take profits if it does go above this line correspond exactly with the resistance levels on the candlesticks okay if it breaks this resistance, then likely it could rise to the next one. And that's the next take profit suggestion. But currently they're saying, don't buy. You could put a pending order up above this resistance level. If it goes above the pivot, then your pending order would buy and you could have take profits programmed for these areas up here with your stop loss back below. So the way you read these signals is uh, in the non-indicated direction, this one is a sell. So the non-indicated direction is a buy, you might put a pending order on the other side of the pivot line. In case a headline hits unexpectedly that reverses the market, then you're ready. If it breaks through this resistance here, then maybe it carries up to the next ones, okay? So the way you'd read this is pending order up here to buy, and then a market sell if you like the entry point. And right now, it, it it's just starting to drop with a red candle I can see here, and the take profit suggestions are the support levels down here. See, it's labeled support. If we went to the larger candlesticks, we would see that these suggested take profits on the sell correspond with support levels on the chart. And that's what we'll do right now. Let me delete these lines and we'll go through and we'll draw the lines that are in the signal on the chart. Brian, good question. Uh, Brian's asking, are these signals coming from Trading Central only based on the technical analysis or does it take into account fundamental analysis? And, and I would say, yes, it takes into account both. The, the signals are not just uh, automatically pinged out based on where the candlesticks are. These signals are coming from Trading Central, which usually is a paid service. It's a third party company. Uh, we cover the cost to have these signals come in for you for free on all live accounts. Uh, you can go, go to tradingcentral.com. You'll find their website. You'll see that they, they offer these services. Uh, usually it's paid. You have to pay to have them. Uh, we have them coming in here and those analysts from Trading Central certainly would be paying attention to, to the same stuff I just looked at, okay? Uh, so, it, they're looking at what's happening with the headlines, the fundamental news, what's the sentiment today, and they're looking at, did it just break through a support level like it did here? It broke this support and now is below that support level. So the technical analysis shows a downtrend and the fundamental news shows fear on the markets, which typically strengthens the USD, especially if it's fear about interest rate hikes coming in the US. Uh, and so yes, the fundamental news typically aligns with the signals. But as we did before we started outlining the signal, I suggest you do your own fundamental analysis. It, it only took us five minutes to do that. Do your own fundamental analysis and make sure that in your mind, the signals agree with the most recent news. Okay, the signal might've come out an hour ago and maybe you do analysis right now on the headlines on, on the major news websites and you see, ooh, there's new information that just came out. And, and if that's the case, maybe that new headline that just hit goes against this signal, right? What, what if you look on, on your 
you know, Wall Street Journal or whatever your favorite uh, news website is or in our Market Buzz feature and you see a headline just came out that said, U.S. announces they will freeze interest rates the rest of the year. You know, if you saw that headline, you'd understand, okay, I don't trust this signal anymore because if they just said that they're not going to raise interest rates the rest of the year, then, uh, then maybe that interest rate fear disappears. And obviously they haven't said that, but I, my point is, you, you want to do a recent check of the latest headlines and fundamental news before you go in to look at the signals. You don't have to, but that's that's my recommendation, just so that you're as aware of it as you can be with the most recent sentiment before you go in to trade on the signals, okay? That way you can make sure you're aligned in your own thinking with the sentiment before you trust a signal in one direction or the other, okay? I, I don't recommend just blindly following signals. All right, because the signals are only as good as the time they came out and the news can change since then. You see, you see that it's time stamped here. Signal produced 1754 and that will be on uh, your platform time. Okay, your local time, it should show the correct times. So, so this signal is not very old, it's pretty new. Uh, it's not brand new, but it's not more than a, a couple hours old either. Okay, so, uh, Let's draw the lines then on the chart. And I'm on one week candles. I think maybe I need to go to one day or four hour candles to get the lines where we're going to need them. So we see that this pivot line is at 6790. So if I want to draw a line at 6790, that's right about there within a pip or so. That's 6790. I think I drew it on 6791. Okay. I could try and cheat it down just a little. There, now I'm on 6790. So there's the pivot line. If it goes above there, they're saying, don't sell. You might think about buying. Uh, and the take profits up here above the pivot line, I'll go with the highest one, 6840. That's right about there, okay? 6840, and you see that that's an old support level back here, an old resistance level. Now I could even go to, like, say four hour candles, I think we'll still see everything in the view. There it is. So uh, this is the level that if it goes above this line, they're saying buy in the signal. And as long as it's still below, they're saying sell. And you see that this take profit suggestion up here, which I drew the, the higher one, is right in line with this area right here, which is a resistance level from a little while back, okay? So we see resistance, resistance, breaks above there, now it gapped down below at the start of the week. And what we're looking at here then is today, we're down below. So the signal is a sell. Let's draw the support levels then. 67.30, 67.30, that's right about here, okay? We see that's an old support level. So we see here, the price, once it got above this line, it became support, you see the price hit and bounced. Then it hit again and bounced. So this is viewed as a technical support level. So if this does keep dropping, the, the signal is saying it might have trouble breaking this price because that's a spot where it held once it got above in the past. Not that it couldn't break the price, but it is a suggested spot where you might first take profit if this does keep dropping. Uh, and then 66.90 is the next spot that they see as a potential uh, take profit. And that's right about there. And you see again, it's like a staircase. This was a spot where there, this line now, the second take profit, which is here in the signal, it was a resistance level here, resistance. And then once it got above that price, you see it came down and bounced off of that price as support. So old resistance, once it's broken, many times becomes new support where the price holds and goes up further. So it's like a staircase going up. We see one step, it goes up. Another step, it goes up. Another step, it goes up. Now it's a downward staircase. It's going down, over. The expectation in this signal is that it'll go down one more step and over, and maybe down another step to this one. Okay, because the sentiment changed. The staircase went up during positive sentiment. 
The read is now negative sentiment, a gap down at the start of the week. It's a sign of negative sentiment when you get a gap down like that. And now it broke this support level here today. So the signal is continued falling to the next step down and maybe the next step down in this uh, support and resistance staircase, if you want to call it that. Okay. Any questions on that analysis of the support and resistance levels and, and of this signal? What I'll do is I'll go ahead and make a move on this. And since there was a question about AVA Protect, I'll go ahead and use AVA Protect on a market move, okay? So let's say I'm gonna act on this signal. And so if I click sell, uh, but as I'm acting on this signal, maybe I say, hey, there's some big announcements tomorrow. Uh, you know, maybe a headline hits and this goes flying the wrong way. Maybe I, I wanna sell, but I also wanna protect myself in a unique way. In case there's some volatility, I'd rather maybe not put a stop loss right now, let's say. And I'm just making that up. I, I kind of would, would, would trust the sentiment right now. But let's say you don't. You're afraid of a temporary pullback that could stop you out before it goes the right way. Uh, and so you say, okay, let me use Ava Protect. It's a unique way to trade. So uh, maybe I say, okay, let me see what it would cost for one lot uh, to protect let's say for a couple days, not just a few hours. What if I wanna protect this for a couple days? Uh, $240 for a one lot trade. Wow, the profit potential on one lot could be huge. Let me, let me check what the profit potential is. If, if Let's program the take profit at the first level, 06730, that's the first take profit level. Uh, potential profit more than double uh, the cost of the protection. 550 approximately uh, possible profit. The protection cost me 240, and I can be patient for two days. No matter how far it goes the wrong way, I'll be refunded. Any losses on the trade, uh, my only cost is the protection up front, uh, and I'm refunded any any losses during the protected time period. Okay, or if I close before the protection ends. I uh, so maybe I say, you know what? I'm willing to risk X amount per trade. So maybe I'm willing to risk 500 per trade. And I say, you know what? I can take a bigger trade then. The protection's pretty cheap there. So let me do two lots. Now my, my, my risk, my cost of the, the trade is 480, but my potential profit is nearly 1100. Okay, uh, at 480, I'm willing to risk 500. I still could go a little bigger, 2.1. Okay, 504, I need to go a little smaller, 208. And there we are, almost exactly 500. Price 504 cents uh, for the protection, possible profit 1144 or so. It's moving because the price is moving right now. Uh, if I feel like this should drop, but I'm not sure about the timing right now, and I think over the next couple of days, that fear of rate hike in the US will will strengthen the US dollar against the Australian dollar, but maybe I'm afraid there could be a pullback if I just put a stop loss. Uh, and I want the freedom to let it go the wrong way if it's gonna pull back, but be able to stay with it for a couple days if I believe eventually it's going to drop. And that would be the situation where I would use AVA Protect for something like two days. Gives me the ability to be very patient no matter how far it might go the wrong way in the short term to wait and see if it'll go the right way eventually. That's what this type of protection does for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and sell on that. I paid 500 up front out of my balance. And for you, if if you wanna risk 1% of your balance, uh, half a percent, 2%, whatever it is, based on your balance, you take a trade size that makes sense for the cost of the protection, okay? Uh, and, and so that's one move that we can set up here. What if I then say, you know what? The signal's also telling me that if this goes above the pivot line that I should buy. So I might look at the chart and say, here's the pivot line. If it goes above that line, let's go to one hour candles. If it goes above this line, I could have a pending order ready to buy. Okay, maybe in the short term, you could catch a bounce back up. And that's an option too, to put a pending order up here. And if it breaks through to buy. Now, because that would be working against the sentiment right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not do that. 
but you certainly could. You could play this in both directions. Market move one way with Ava Protect, uh, and and a, a, a pending order the opposite direction above a key price level. Okay, uh, so that's certainly something that that you could look to do. Let's take a look maybe at a different signal, and and see what we think about something else. And so. Maybe we look at a different category. And so let's go to indices maybe. And as we go under indices, we see not all of them have a signal, but some of them do. The DAX, uh, the, the, the Dow Jones Euro 50, the India, no, India 50 doesn't. The Spain 35, a number of these have signals. So maybe we're interested in the DAX to take a look and see uh, maybe some non-U.S. markets, how are they reacting? And uh, again, not a surprise to me that a major index, uh, even if it's not a U.S. index, the signal is to sell. Why? Because there's negative sentiment right now on the market. So when, when you start to, before you look at a signal, you can guess in your mind what you think it should be, and then you bring up the signal and you see that it's exactly what you were thinking. Uh, then maybe you're on to something with your fundamental analysis. Then maybe what you've looked at and your thought process is in line with what the analysts are thinking too, okay? Just kind of a game you can play to maybe build confidence that you're kind of reading the sentiment of the day uh, properly, that that you, you feel before you clicked on this that they're probably saying you should sell, and you pull it up and indeed it's a sell signal. Okay, maybe then you decide to analyze the entry point and see if it's something you want to act on in the direction that you feel it should go. Uh, and so you can have a checklist like that, that, that not only do you want to believe that you understand which way the sentiment's going to go, you also want the signals that are coming in from Trading Central to align with you, and then you want a certain entry point strategy with your technical analysis also to be in the right place. Okay, and so, that doesn't have to be your whole checklist, but it's an example of a checklist. And that's how you go from using one tool to trade on to having an actual trading strategy, which uses multiple tools, okay? Multiple tools meaning uh, headline news, market buzz news maybe, uh, the signals, and your own technical analysis. And maybe you even throw an indicator on the chart, okay? And I'll show you an example of an indicator. Uh, if you all want to see something that, that uh, many times is, is nice to look at, uh, you could start to put uh, your own support and resistance levels. You see here's an old resistance level. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Once it broke through on the four-hour candles, it became support. Okay? You see how it's a classic resistance level becoming support once the price breaks above. And you might ask, well, why does that happen? What's so special about that price? And, and the fact is, it's not necessarily anything special about that exact price. What's special is what was going on in the world at that price. And so something happened in the past that went bad for the markets here and caused it to push back down. Then technical traders see the next time it approaches that price, they see that as resistance. And so they say, you know what, once it gets near their sell. So once it gets near that price, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy at that point. Traders sell when it reaches that old resistance level, even if there isn't news to support selling. It, it's a technical drop, potentially, where it pushes back down. But then you see it keeps targeting that price because the fundamental news wasn't bad enough to really drop the market, and boom, it breaks through. Something happened on this day, fundamentally, that was good enough news on the markets to break through this price level. So all those technical traders off of this resistance got overwhelmed by the fundamental news and the, the buyers came in and broke it through the resistance because of some kind of good fundamental news story. And then it broke through and you see as it comes down, it doesn't break below there by much because the same good news that caused it to break above the resistance, that news still exists. And so it holds it from dropping below because everyone who bought on that good news still sees that good news. And so they don't sell and, and the price holds above. It doesn't always work out that way, especially when new headlines hit that are the opposite news, then you can see it break right back down. 
Uh, but you, we do see this many times. It's a classic pattern. Uh, you can't rely on it 100%, but you see many times over and over where there's resistance. Once it breaks through, for whatever fundamental reason caused it to break through, then that resistance becomes support. Okay, and here we see resistance. It breaks through and it becomes support right here with a bounce back up. It did test dropping down again, but then right back up. Okay, and now we see it came down today, hit the resistance and went back up again. So now we're bouncing off of this support level, which was the old resistance back here. Okay, so the current situation is this has dropped uh, today to this support level and now bounced back up. Okay. Now, the question is, based on this signal, is it valid still? Are, are we still below the pivot line? And the answer is yes. The pivot line is at 16.330. So we can take a look at 16.330. Let's draw a line. That's right about there, okay? That's this resistance right here. And remember I said these lines typically line up with a support and resistance level. It's why the analysts put that there. If this breaks above this line, they're saying then buy. Okay? You see it's bouncing, but it has not broken the pivot line from the signal. If this breaks above this pivot line and hits, say, up here, then they're saying buy with your take profit up towards the next resistance levels up here or up here. Okay? So uh, this signal is still an active sell, even though it's bouncing. We do see that it, had you acted on the signal uh, earlier today, okay, you see this signal came out quite a ways ago, 1259. So it already dropped since that time, okay? If we go back, uh, you know, eight hours, right? Then, and that's my time, right? So it's about seven, eight hours ago, the movement was up here. So it, this signal already came down and nearly hit uh, one of the take profit levels, okay? So uh, I believe this signal started, if we go to one hour candles, let's go to one hour, go back about seven hours, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This signal started right around here, okay? And it did push down almost to the take profit. Look how close they were with the prediction. Their first take profit level, uh, was down here, and it's not quite there, but it, but it was trying to get down that direction. I'm sorry, it's actually the first take profit level is down here, around 16,160, which is this support level down here. So the take profits, I take that back then. This drop here was before the signal. The signal came out up here. So we're almost at the same price uh, that it was when the signal came out which is this blue line, here's the live price, okay? So what we're looking at then is a signal that has not moved toward uh, to completely the first take profit. It, it did try to drop a little here, okay? It came down the first two, three hours of the signal. It came down and now it's bounced a little, but it has not gone above the pivot. So there's negative sentiment still, the sell signal is still valid because it didn't break above the pivot and it didn't yet hit the take profits. So uh, you see it's easier if you get in on the one hour candles here to look at it. When I was on four hour candles, I was off a little bit on my technical analysis. So you wanna take a, a look at different candle levels and, and the smaller candle sometimes gives you a more intricate view. And now I can see it did not touch that first take profit uh, suggestion yet. So. Uh, it's a valid signal. So with this one, maybe we don't use uh, Ava Protect because it's not available on, on indices. So maybe I just say, okay, let me sell on this then. I'll put my stop loss above this, this pivot level. So my stop loss should be at, say, 16.345. So instead of Ava Protect, if it's not available, I can use standard stop loss, 16.345 on the stop loss. Make sure, yeah, I'm on a sell. Uh, my take profit then could be this first take profit level. You see their, their take profit suggestion lines up perfectly with this support level. You see in the past it hit right here and bounced. 
So that's why they say take profit maybe here. That might be a support level that has trouble breaking. If you if you want to wait further, then the next support level is the next take profit suggestion, which is near this low point here where it bounced from. Uh, okay, so we'll go with the first one, 16, uh, 160 as an example for potential take profit. We see it's better than two to one ratio, possible, pro possible profit to possible loss. Okay, now I have to adjust my trade size uh, to risk the amount that makes sense to me. So if I have my entry point, my exit point lined up now, I've got my stop loss above the resistance level, above that pivot point line from the signal. Uh, I've got my take profit just before the first support level. So I don't even have to break the support level to hit my take profit. If I like my in my entry point and exit points, now I just need to have the right trade size so that my possible loss is the amount I'm willing to risk. Okay, so uh, let me go maybe one lot. Now I see I'm risking 584. If I know I want to risk 500, for example, per trade, then I need a smaller trade, 0 0.75. Uh, now I'm risking 446, so I can go a little bigger, 0 0.8. And I see 475, 0 0.86, let's say, and 521, 0 0.84, and there I am. Almost exactly 500, 508. I can try and be a little more precise, 0 0.83, and 502. Okay, close enough. So I'm risking about 500 to make over 1,100 if I win the trade. Okay, so there it is. I'm in the direction that maybe I believe the sentiment says I should trade. I have a better than two to one ratio to potential profit compared to risk. I've got my stop loss above the pivot level, above the resistance level, so that for sure the momentum would have to change for me to lose. Something would have to get rid of the fear and the US, uh, the US dollar and the, and, and, uh, the other currencies would, would have to uh, give ground back to uh, the equities and, and, and the, the, the different indices out there for, for this trade to go bad, right? We would need the DAX 30 to climb against the euro to climb against uh other other things for for this trade to go bad and it would have to have enough momentum to break above this resistance level to lose and to win we just need the trend to continue we don't even need to break this support level because our take profit is just above it okay and you can even cheat your take profit up if you want you could go at this little support level that it was at this week and you still would probably have a a larger potential profit compared to risk. And let me show you, if you decided to do that, let's say, you know what? I wanna take profit at 16,211. Can I change my trade? Absolutely. So let's go back to the chart. Let's go to the open trades. We go to the DAX 30. If I click on that trade, then the DAX 30 chart loads at the bottom. And what's nice is I can adjust my stop loss just by dragging it on the chart. So uh, here you see this, all my support and resistance levels are here. You see my stop loss is above the pivot that I drew. And you see the take profit is down here right by that first support level. So if I decide I want to adjust my take profit, all I have to do is slide it up. I could put it at this support level up here if I want and let go, boom. It's adjusted immediately, okay? And I still have a larger potential profit then risk, okay? So you can adjust take profit, stop loss that easily, uh, however you'd see fit as the trade is moving, okay? Very easy tools to work with. Again, that feature of dragging the stop loss and take profit uh, on an open trade, you find when you go to the open positions section, okay? The chart in the trade section doesn't show those lines. Okay, for stop loss and take profit. Any questions on anything before we end things uh, this evening? Okay, I'm reading a question uh, regarding AVA Protect. Uh, can a trade execute with AVA Protect? Uh, can you exit early if the take profit was set too far away? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Good question. So with AVA Protect, you can close the trade at any time. So on that trade I just opened, 
let's say in the last five minutes, the, 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 the movement uh, went flying in the right direction and it's already at a profit that I want to close on. By all means, close it. You already paid for the protection anyways. Doesn't matter. If it's at a profit you like, especially if it's at a profit larger than what you paid for the protection, you don't have to wait. You can close it now. If it got close to your take profit and you're afraid it'll retreat, you can close it if you want. Early, no problem. Uh, and the same is true if it's losing. Let's say it went flying the wrong way and you say, wow, uh, I want to collect on the protection. If, if it's down a couple thousand and you know if you close it now, Ava Protect is going to pay you that negative that's on the trade because it's protected. By all means, close it, take the payment from the protection, then reopen the trade. Maybe with a stop loss at that point, because then if it even comes halfway back, you'd be an overall profit. Uh, if, if you took a huge payment from the Ava Protect and you're only down the cost of the protection and then you reopen a trade, now if it just comes back the right way, even not all the way back, you still could be an overall profit. So there are different ways to use Ava Protect. Uh, those are very good questions, by the way. Uh, why, there's a question, why did gold fall steeply today? Think about what gold is paired against. Okay, gold is paired against the U.S. dollar here. U.S. dollar strengthened today. Why? Because of the housing data. So if if the expectation now, because that housing data was so strong out of the U.S. today, if the expectation is, wow, the U.S. is going to raise interest rates for sure again now, if that's how you felt, gold is a safe haven, many times largely against inflation. Well, if, if the expectation is that they're going to raise interest rates aggressively still in the U.S., well, that's the opposite of inflationary. Raising interest rates causes currencies to strengthen. That works against why you would have bought into gold. So those who bought into gold because they think the U.S. dollar is weak, inflationary, because the U.S. passed this huge multi-trillion dollar deficit deal uh, recently, and you say, wow, well, there's reason to buy gold because they're going to be printing more money in the U.S. Uh, now it's the opposite. Wow, they're going to raise interest rates maybe in the U.S. I, I want to buy the U.S. dollar again because raising interest rates tends to strengthen a currency. So that's the game that's going on uh, many times. When you see news that makes people think interest rates will go up in the US, you see many times the commodities drop uh, and gold being one of them against the USD, okay? And especially gold as a safe haven when people fear staying in the currencies, they fear that a currency will weaken and be inflationary, then gold's an attractive safe haven. And if it's the opposite, if you think that the currency will strengthen, then it makes sense to buy the currency. Okay, and, and largely that that is is what many traders maybe were thinking as they dumped gold and bought the U.S. dollar. Okay, uh, so that just shows you the power of fundamental news uh, to use that along with your technical analysis. So how could you have used technical analysis with today's news on gold? Well, here's a support level from the past, right? Support, bounced, support, bounced. Then again today, support, bounced, support, bounced. You could have said, hey, if the price drops below that support level, I'll sell. If it hits, say, this price, I'll sell. Here's the breakthrough on the drop. It broke the support levels here. You could have had a pending order that sold, and you could have dropped from 43 all the way down to, 30, that's $13 an ounce before it even bounced. You could make a huge profit with $13 an ounce in the right direction. So if you said, hey, there's news, reason for the US to strengthen, let me find a support level and put a pending order below it. If it breaks the support level, then I'll sell. It tested, bounced. Here's the breakthrough candle. Once it broke, you could add a pending order right below to sell. And there's the momentum from the breakthrough easy profit okay it's an example of a, a strategy that trades in the direction of the breakthrough support level fundamental news in your mind says wow the usd should strengthen maybe i put a pending order below this price if it breaks i'll sell on gold usd strengthens breaks the support level boom could have triggered your pending order to sell and there's your profit all the way down and and you might have looked to take profit near this support level down here. This was a support level where it bounced in the past. So it got near that price and bounced. It looks like it's not done 
trying to challenge the support level because it didn't quite reach it down here. Maybe it keeps bouncing, but uh, if, if the fear keeps hitting the market anyways, it certainly could challenge the support level uh, down in this area down here where this low point hit around 1925 or so. So we'll see if this continues to try and push down uh, to, to the next support level and, and maybe further, we'll see. All right, everybody, good questions. Thank you for the participation. It really helps everybody. Uh, if there's some insightful questions and then we start expanding on topics that make sense for everyone that, that I might not have thought to talk about. So thank you for the good questions and participation. Uh, good luck with your trading, everybody. Uh, my next session will be Thursday at 11 a.m. UK time, and we'll spend a little bit more time on the fundamental news tools, but obviously we'll also look at the technical analysis because uh, no matter what, both the fundamental analysis and technical go hand in hand. All right, everybody, uh, good luck with your trading this evening and, and the rest of the week. Bye for now.